body fire, so... Is your new diode laser a fire hazard? Do you need to keep a fire extinguisher or maybe a fire blanket on hand at all time? Well, welcome back to Directed Tech and let's take a look at the fire potential for a diode or heck, maybe even a CO2 laser. Stand by. Okay, so for today's video, we're just gonna take a look at some various uh, media, as I like to call it, so wood, paper, cardboard, stuff like that, and see what the potential is for fire because you may not realize it, um, but you have a very high potential to catch things on fire, which is why I can't stress enough, you never wanna leave your laser unattended. I know I've done it myself. I almost set my house on fire because I thought, can't happen to me. Um, let me tell you, if you leave this thing alone, it's burning, it's cutting, and it, uh, it's gonna happen. You can set things on fire. So I wanna prevent that. Again, never leave this thing unattended. And I understand some of the projects, especially on a diode laser, you can be talking about an hour or two hours of engraving time or cutting time. Um, but hey, it's the nature of the beast, safety first. For today's demonstration, we're gonna be using my Atom Stack X7 Pro, which is a 10 watt optical output diode laser. We'll be using Lightburn to run the files that I'm testing. Just simple things, a couple of squares there. And then finally, we'll do a very quick demonstration on my 60 watt CO2 laser there in the back. So it just had a little burst of flame there. And I am intentionally not running air assist. This is basically how the machine was when I bought it. The only fan is the fan that blows down the diode for cooling. And this is the sheet that it comes with to protect the cutting surface so that you're not burning through onto a table or something. So again, this is a speed of five and a power of 80, cutting through, I think this is, three millimeter plywood. So we had a couple of small flames there. Didn't burst into flames, but uh, definitely not safe. For this next test, we're going to run a fill pattern, same speed and power. And we've already got a pretty decent flame going in there. And this is very uh, similar to what can happen. I've had, you know, sometimes you choose the wrong settings in Lightburn. and you thought you were gonna do a cut, but you accidentally had it set to fill. And next thing you know, again, this is why you never wanna leave your laser unattended. If you notice this at the right when it happened, you could easily stop the job and, you know, fix the problem. But if you were to, to walk away or if you thought that, uh, you know, things, things looked like they were good starting out, which is what happened in my case. Everything was going fine, but it got to uh, some letters, I think, that I just wanted to, you know, trace around the edges. So basically a line pattern, but I had accidentally set it to fill. So here I've got the machine doing something like this, and I come back and uh, my piece of wood is on fire. Now what we have in this, this second attempt here is it was doing the fill pattern and basically it just burned away uh, all of the material. You can see the charred edges from the flames there. So again, you know, didn't burst into flames, but we did have flames there that were burning and a, a very high 
uh, potential for fire. Now for this next test, I'm going to use a piece of painted wood. I just spray painted this wood with uh, some silver paint. It's exactly how things were set up uh, when uh, I had my little fire. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you're working on a project and you think, hey, uh, I'm going to, you know, paint this wood and then I'm just going to do a, a light line uh, engraving on it and everything should turn out fine. So let's see what happens. Okay, painted wood. This is a line cut, eight millimeters per second, or five millimeters per second, 80 uh, percent power on. And I think what you'll see here is that line cuts tend to be a little bit safer because the material gets removed. Uh, if it's a thin enough piece of wood, there's nothing left uh, really for the laser to interact with once it's uh, made its way through. And I think that's what we're seeing here because we are uh, just finishing, finishing past 10. And that's what we are left with. Now we're going to try a fill pattern. So same painted wood, speed of five millimeters a second, 80% power. And we've got some flames happening in there. Now, last but not least, let's try this on some cardboard. I know a lot of people would say I would never laser cardboard, but um, hey, there are some people that do it, and this should be a good example of the fire potential of a diode laser. So for this one, I'm using a little ornament. You know, maybe you're trying to save some wood. You just want to test out a pattern. So say, hey, let's give this a go. Let me uh, try out this ornament here, and uh, we'll just give this a little cut. So this is a little bit uh, fancier than what we were doing before with just our little test squares. But uh, again, so I've got this set at uh, nine millimeters a second and 80%. Uh, percent. And one of the things about this pattern is it has some very intricate details. And a lot of times that's where you'll run into problems because those intricate details, the laser's making a lot of tiny little movements in a very small spot and that will tend to overheat things and uh, increase your fire potential. And we have got a fire. So there you go, folks. Uh, this is what we were talking about. These are the things that we're trying to prevent here. Let me east stop my machine. Uh, and uh, well, yeah, that's 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 going up. Danger, Will Robinson. Well, this smoldering uh, bit of mess here is what's left of our project. 
So you can imagine if this was still sitting on my table and, you know, or if I weren't, if I hadn't been standing right there, um, this can be, this can be a very, very bad day. Okay, so real quick, this is my CO2 laser. I'm going to give you a quick demo. I intentionally do not have air assist on right now, which I never do this when I'm not cutting wood, but I have made that mistake. There's so much to set up on this machine, making sure the water chiller's on, making sure the exhaust, uh, exhaust fan is on, making sure everything else that is set up that sometimes, you know, I've forgotten to hit the, uh, uh, the switch on my compressor and turn on the air assist, and this is what happens if you don't do that. So you can see that flame there, that is super bad. I'm not gonna let this run any longer because it's really bad for my laser, so I'm gonna hit my emergency stop. But uh, that gives you an idea of why you don't want to ever, um, you know, leave your machine. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully you learned a little something today. And the number one thing you've, uh, you've learned is don't leave these things unattended. The potential for fire is real. So hopefully you liked what I've done today. Uh, if you're enjoying it, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's take this journey together. So remember, always keep those safety goggles on, and let's keep burning.